CTE Pro 1 Truth Series video 13. We're going to take a look at the 60 degree perception along with one outside alignment for the 60 and one inside alignment. Let's take a look at the visuals. For a 60, we're going to be looking at a couple left cuts today. We looked at right cuts with the 45 degree perception, so we're just going to look at a couple of uh, left cuts today. So I have this uh, set up here representing a very slight left cut. Now, right off the bat, I want to tell you that 60s do carry a degree of iffiness. But over time, with proper work, they can become fairly reliable alignments. But oftentimes it is a good idea to play safe rather than go for an iffy, extremely thin cut. 60s can be described as being extremely thin cuts whereas 45s are thin cuts. The reason, the major reason that 60s are iffy is because there's only one line that anchors the cue ball to the object ball. You have one visual line. The remaining lines are in space. So for a left cut, your visual is left cue ball edge to right object ball one eighth. Now, there is a parallax line and you seeing an SP45 there and you're wondering what's that for? Well, I want to just share with you very quickly. This is a little training card that I use for uh, 45s and I have a little dot marked at a half inch uh, on each side of the card so I can use it for right and left cuts. Then I can flip the card over and use uh, the same card for the 60. So I have a couple of dots marked at 27 30 seconds of an inch. And I can I can use this card for practicing uh, I can use this card for practicing sight lines. So now the reason I had the SP45 out there is because I've done my homework with SP45s. I've used this little card and I'm pretty strong at knowing where that sight line is for an SP45. And I wouldn't tell you this if it were not so, but I use the parallax line for the uh, 60s quite often. The parallax line is inside cue ball quarter to halfway between the outer edge of the object ball and where the SP45 sightline dot is in space. So when I, when I get down to look, I can notice that my parallax line is what I think is halfway between the outer edge and SP45. So I use that, I can use it very effectively, but I have done my homework with a training card. And I still use the training card for the 45 and 60s. Now, so our aim line is left cue ball edge to object ball, uh, right object ball one eighth. That's half of a quarter. Parallax line is inside cue ball quarter to essentially halfway between the outer edge and SP45. I think I alluded to this earlier in an early video that actually that's a one thirty second of an inch off, but when you're in space, go with the halfway point as your mindset for seeing the parallax line. Now the sight line is center cue ball to 27, 30 seconds of an inch in space. And one of the beautiful things about working with a 60 is that and the 45 is the sideline is always a constant 
for the 45 one half inch in space. The sight line for the 60 is always a constant 2730 seconds of an inch out in space. So at least you're working with a constant even though it's in space. Now for the 45 you have two lines that anchor the, the, the cue ball and the object ball together for your visual. And that parallax line for the 45 is absolutely fantastic. So use it. The parallax line is very strong for the 60. Once you get used to the 45 sight line that's in space, you can develop a mindset that your parallax line is halfway between the outer edge and the SP45. So, 60s are iffy. And uh, today's game uh, is such that sometimes, maybe a lot of times, you have to go for that 60. It depends on the situation. Sometimes you're going to go for the shot, sometimes you're going to play safe. That's just, that's just the nature of the game. But when you're working with 60s over and over and over with the same object ball orientation in relation to the cue ball with the sight line always 27, 30 seconds of an inch in space, you'd be surprised at how efficient you can become in working with 60 degree perceptions. Let's take a look at our cue ball, object ball placements for today. And once again, we're going to go to, to the head spot and just take a left turn, go a half diamond down the table for your cue ball positioning. For our object ball positioning, they're going to be fairly close together. Just go to this diamond and diamond intersection here. And the 60 outside is precisely one third of an inch to the left. And then the 60 inside is a, I say one third of an inch, one third of a diamond, excuse me. The 60 inside is a half a diamond to the left. So, one third of a diamond one half of a diamond. This is your outside, this is your inside. Uh, this is a closer look at the tool that I use. I have one of these uh, made for each table that I might encounter from a three and a half by seven all the way up to a 12 footer. So whatever two to one surface that I encounter, I have a setup tool that helps me immensely. Keep in mind, there's only a few shots in this true series. In my book, uh, Center Pocket Music, using CTE Pro 1 to improve your pool game, there's over a thousand shots, and those shots were carefully chosen so as to shorten your learning curve. Before we get started, with working directly with the 60 outside and the 60 inside, I would like to address a uh, address an idea that uh, center to edge makes all shots. So let's say that we have this uh, alignment here, which is technically a 60 outside to this shot. Uh, Someone might think that, okay, center to edge does not make all shots. Actually, center to edge does make all shots. I have, I have an aim line for the 15 that pockets this ball cross corner. So I have the perfect aim line that shows me the foundational aim line for pocketing that 15. So. Set up the, 
the, 50, the uh, 60 for the inside, I still have the same foundational aim line that pockets this ball cross corner. I hit those balls a little bit rough, but they still went. But the principle is the same. Just because you have a thin, extremely thin, 60 inside shot does not mean that you don't have other options that provide exact aim lines. Obviously, if I want the high percentage of pocketing this 60 outside, I'm going to cut it in every time. But nonetheless, I do have an aim line that pockets this ball. I can extend that into a different shot. This alignment for 60 outside also provides me with a 15 outside for making this ball three rails in the side. If I move it over here to the 60 inside alignment, I have that same 15 outside alignment that pockets this ball three rails in the side. Now, yes, I have to control my speed. I have to understand spin. At some point in the Truth Series, if there's enough support for my work, then I'm going to give you a very strong education concerning the art of banking. So, you know, if you like what you see in this truth series, support me, please. It would be much appreciated. This has been a lot of work. I've, I've been at this for 15, 16 years, putting this together so that you can have it. This truth series is a chance for you to become an informed consumer before you purchase my book. So I don't want anybody to purchase my book that's not sold on what I'm doing. If you, if you don't like this, you won't like the book. If you like this, you'll love my book. So I've put a lot of work in on this. So if you like this and you want to see this truth series continue to develop for supporting you to be able to approach this game visually and physically like a professional player, then I'd appreciate your support. I'm here to help you. Okay. I never know where I'm going when I start these two series. It's always interesting to see uh, to see how it develops. I have a lot of fun with these uh, videos, uh, or I certainly wouldn't be doing them. Uh, this first alignment that we have uh, is a 60 outside. Now. So I'm, I'm going to start off with I'm going to start off with pro one, and I have one line on the object ball, left cue ball edge to right object ball, uh, one eighth. Now, if I were to shoot down that sight line, that is 27 30 seconds of an inch. Uh, in space, then I'm going to, this object ball is going to track thin to the pocket. So you see I can set this little card up beside the ball and I have some sightline assistance for developing proper visual skills for the 60. So when I look down that sightline, and I've seen it so many times over the years, uh, uh, I know where it is. That doesn't take away the fact that 60s carry a degree of iffiness. I'm not naive. Uh, so, we need an outside pivot. One thing that I want to address today, perhaps maybe a little bit more than the past, is arm position. Now, when I do uh, my alignment, I, I, wanna, I want to address my arm position. Now for Pro 1, since I'm sweeping to my conventional 
favorite line of sight, strongest line of sight. My arm's still going to be a little bit in the out position, even though I'm going conventional. But it's not as noticeable for Pro 1. So, we need an outside pivot for this Pro 1. So, I have left cue ball edge. Uh, that's my aim line to right object ball 1 8. So, my head is angled to the left at parallax. As I go down for this shot, my head is going to unangle. Well, let me back up. Obviously, I'm stepping the cue ball to the right. In Pro 1, you step the cue ball while you're standing. So, I see the perfect sight. I see the perfect nissle right here for pocketing that ball. There's no other aiming system in this game that can resolve center cue ball down to one tick. Now, there's plenty of good players out there, obviously, that, that can use center cue ball. But that doesn't mean they have a system that resolves center cue ball the one tick on the object ball. And that's precisely why some professional players, a handful possibly, uh, advocate not using center cue ball. Here's what I can tell you. It's a whole different ball game when you can work with a known center cue ball rather than a guesswork center cue ball. It's a whole different approach, a whole different mindset for using center cue ball. So, here we go. There's my 60 degree perception. And what I really like about this is that I have a parallax line that is just outside of the outer edge. I'm seeing that, perceiving it as being halfway to where the dot would be for the SP45. So, uh, there's my perception. I'm stepping the cue ball, the right half. So, I'm going to unangle my head when I go into this shot. So, here we go. I'm going to unangle my head so I can use my vision. Now, my arm position felt pretty conventional. Even though, if you were to do a contrast between what would happen for Pro 1 outside and Pro 1 inside, the Pro 1 inside would actually be a little bit closer to my body. These are things that you've never been taught before in conventional aiming for ghost ball contacts and fractions because instructors, by and large, have been teaching a target shooting approach for the conventional methods of aiming. How who will knew it was wrong decades ago. I've come to understand exactly what he was talking about and I concur 100%. Basic CTE. Now, I'm going to do a right to left pivot. Let me back up just a bit for Pro 1. My visual sweep for Pro 1, my, my visual sweep for Pro 1 was the bend to the right. It was not this left sweep. It was a bend to the right. A Pro 1 right visual sweep, which mimics foundationally a right to left manual pivot for Pro 1. So, so when I go into this uh, uh, visual to full stance, I'm going to have my tip foundationally placed at a half, half tip outside of that 27, 30 seconds of an inch sight line. If I'm practicing, I can just lay my card right beside the ball and my sight line will be, uh, my pre-pivot alignment will be just right outside of this dot. So these little cards can provide for you invaluable uh, training uh, assistance. 
So my arm is going to be in the it's going to be in the, in this position here. So when I pivot, so it's going to be like this. So when I pivot, it's going to be in the out position. You want to develop an awareness of where your arm will naturally be for aligning to the nissle. There's going to be a very obvious and distinct outside alignment for my arm for this 60 outside. So here we go. I'm going to go down a half tip pre pivot alignment just outside of the sight line. My parallax line is good. My aim line is good. I, I'm I'm all in with a, what I think is a perfect 60 degree perception here. I step the cue ball to the outside. My arm is in a very distinct uh, out position. The sky is fitting. For basic CTE, my arm's going to be in the out position. So when I'm all in with the nissle here for my disguise pivot, I know there's no way I'm going to pull my arm to the inside. That would create a, a, a 60 inside, and I'd likely miss the ball to the thin part of the pocket. So when I do this disguise pivoting, Keep in mind, it's, it's parallax here, and as I go down, my head's going to coil a little bit more, and I'm going straight to the nissle, having already stepped the cue ball, and my arm is in the out position. I, I, I have some exercises in the book to help you develop in and out arm position awareness for right and left-handed players. So here we go. There's my 60 degree perception. My head coils further to the left because it's a left cut. I'm, I'm gearing and re-gearing the balls here directly on the nissle. My arm's in the out position. So I just stroke straight down that line. Now I want to reiterate what I said yesterday. I noticed that ball went in a little bit thick to the pocket. If I'm going to slow roll this ball, that ball can drag thick. But I'm, what's important is that I'm in an overcut position to start with. And I'm not afraid to use center cue ball and shoot slow for this particular shot. I'm going to shoot this again and just pay attention to where the ball goes into the pocket. Okay, there's my half tip, pre-pivot alignment to the right of the sight line. So I'll pivot to center. Now just stroke straight down that line. It may have slightly favored the right of the pocket. So even though I started off with a slight overcut, that overcut is my safeguard. And I still got a very nice professional entry into the pocket. If I were, if I were shooting this shot as a game-winning shot for an eight ball or, a, or for nine ball, I'm going to do something else rather than slow rolling. I'm going to, I, I, I might, uh, I might put a little low outside on it and send the cue ball up to about right here. That way I have, I have three things protecting uh, collision, the negative effects of collision induced throw. I have speed, number one. I have some low outside spin. I have some low spin, number two, and I have some outside spin, number three. So center to edge is just not a, it, it, it's just not a uh, free pass for shooting everything with center ball as if you're always going to be safe from you know, the negative effects of collision-induced throw, skids, and so forth. So absolutely... Uh, if I were going to shoot that ball to win the game, I'd probably, I'd probably cue it just a little bit low outside and take the cue ball right there. 
if I were going to use center cue ball, if I were going to use center cue ball to make this, I would pick up the speed. I don't have any worry about scratching in this pocket, so, but I certainly don't even want to get close to this pocket. I'd pick up the speed, you, you know, for tracking toward this rail right here. Then I'd be completely safe with center cue ball. So, disguise pivoting. Have I shot that shot yet? So, for disguise pivoting, there's my 60 outside. Step in the ball. I'm going to drop in. I know my arm's going into the out position. And I'm going to shoot that one more time and just notice the tracking. Notice the tracking on the cue ball. Okay, there's my 60. So you see when I pick up the speed and I come to this rail, which I'm well away from this pocket. You know, if you're tracking a diamond away from the pocket, that's generally pretty safe. Half ball pivoting. You know how a little alluded to the idea, actually to the fact, that all shots can be made with center and edge. I think he would say center two edge. I'm not for sure that if we couldn't get a, uh, another comment or two from how about that, that he might would say center and edge. Certainly, certainly if we look at center to edge as being a more direct line to the edge, uh, that's more in line with what we think of as the SP30. But, you can, you can make this ball as an advanced CTE practitioner using the step center as your primary focus and the outer rotational tick for the right side of the object ball. In that manner, I can use center and edge. But that does not change. The fact that there's an aim line there, there's a parallax line there, the sight line is not anywhere near center to edge, the sight line is 27, 30 seconds of an inch out in space. So, center and edge is a beautiful way of, of, of using the rotation of the cue ball to the inside and the rotation of the object ball to the outside, I'm talking about the ticks, in order to arrive at a perfectly geared 60 degree perception. So here we go. Even though the pivot fundamentally comes right to left, I'm going to be doing a half tip pivot, which means the tip is going to cover half of the cue ball from left edge to center. What's critical is that when I go down, I'm going to the step center immediately, tweaking my bridge V to be on that extended step center as it does extend backward, and then, I'll, then, and then I will pivot. But I'm going to focus on the gearing, the inside in relation to the outside. So my primary focus is going to be step center and the rotational tick for the outer edge of the object ball. When that rotational tick for the outer edge of the object ball gets in place, guess what I'll be seeing? A 60 degree perception. Here we go. So, 
So I know my arm's going to be in the out position. I'm going straight to the nestle because I'm already starting to step the cue ball right here. So here we go. My arm's going to be in the out position. And there, there, there it is. It's already there. I have parallax. I have the aim line. It's all there. So all that's left for me to do is just stroke straight down the line. Okay, we're going to take a look at the inside alignment. So I'm going to move the, the object ball over to the half diamond relationship to this uh, intersection. Now, if I were to shoot down the sight line for this shot, so I just butt this little card right up to the edge, and I can, I can train visually like that. So, if, 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 I, if I fall into this shot and shoot right down, shoot right down the sight line, then this ball's going to track thick to the pocket. Now, it may catch the facing. It's even possible for it to come into this side of the pocket. But when we have a, an alignment that is thick to center pocket, then we need an inside uh, pivot. Okay, for Pro 1, for the outside, I had the right bend. For this inside left visual sweep, I'm going to have to do this left motion. Pull up a video of your two favorite pros. Guess what you're going to see? You're going to see left sweeps and you're going to see right sweeps. Some will display it more prominent than others, but once you start connecting with CTE, you're going to see it over and over and over with your favorite players. Left sweep, sweeps and right sweeps. Professional players are not lining up with their noses behind center, moving straight in to their shots. I was the first one to point this out more than a dozen years ago. Now there's not a lot of resistance to, to that assertion and that claim because it's fact. That's what pros do. They line up at, an, they line up at that offset and they're in a position to visually gear the balls for establishing the 360 ticks on the cue ball in relation to the 360 ticks on the object ball. Okay, pro one. There's my there's my uh, uh, I would call it a perfect 60 degree perception, even though I'm just anchored by an aim line, left cue ball edge to right object ball one eighth. So I'm going to do an inside sweep. My head is going to unangle as I go down to the object ball or to the cue ball. So here we go. My head is going to unangle for using my personal favorite line of sight. So I know somebody has thought, well, every shot that he's shooting they're easy shots and I could make them with whatever. Well, that might be true, especially if you've hit a lot of balls. But I'm certainly not going to teach center edge aiming with the cue ball on this end of the table and the object ball on this end of the table. I'm going to get you in one square so that we can put our focus on the visual aspect of the game and diminish the the, the physical aspect, the stroke aspect of it. So I've been teaching center edge aiming now for uh, well nearly 15 years and uh, I, I, I truly understand uh, the best way to teach it and if you want a lot of hard shots I have easy, medium and professional grade 
uh, uh, challenging shots in my book. There's a bunch of them. So have no fear of, uh, of, the, uh, of thinking that you're just always going to be shooting easy shots. Uh, the only way to teach somebody centered edge aiming is with easier setups and then you work your way to longer setups. Having said that, uh, someone's going to take this ball and put it here and put the cue ball up here and then they're going to try it real quick. They're not going to wait. They're going to try. That's human nature. I want to, I want to give it a drive. Okay, basic CTE. It's going to be a left to right pivot. So I know where that sight line is in my mind. I know where the parallax line is. So I'm I'm good to go. Uh, parallax here. A perfect parallax line there. There's my sight line. If I were to shoot down the sight line from here, this ball is going to hit thick to the pocket. So, I'm going to go in. My head's going to coil further to the left. Half tip uh, bridge V alignment. Uh, in relation to the uh, SP60 sight point that's out in space, 27 30 seconds of an inch. I step the cue ball to the inside by looking at the inside half. I tweak my bridge V to be on that line, and then I pivot to center. My job from there is to stroke down that line. Now I hit that ball easy. It drug it a little bit to the inside. Again, CTE places you into a slight overcut. That doesn't mean that when you hit it slow that you're always going to be right at center pocket. So this is a professional system and any professional player, most all strong players would understand that. So I'm going to pick up the speed just a, just a little bit here. So there's my half tip. There's my half tip to the inside. Now I'm going to pick up the speed just a little bit. So you see I've got a lot more of a professional entry into the pocket because I thoroughly understand the difference between what happens between the two balls when you just, just finesse it into the pocket versus adding a little bit of speed to it, which is a positive. That's a positive energy that I created between the cue ball and the object ball for reducing the effects of collision induced throw. Disguise pivoting. There is no sweep here. Uh, oh, I do want to back up. For basic CTE, my arm was on the inside for this inside alignment. Now, when I say inside, in relation to my body, I can shoot insides out here and insides in here, but for this particular basic CTE shot, when I align my tip to the inside of that sight line like this, and then I pivot, where does my cue go? It goes in toward my body. So I understand without even thinking about it that when I shoot this disguise pivot, pivoting shot, when I go to that missile, I'm stepping the cue ball here. I'm aligning my cue to this center, 90 ticks away from the outermost edge of, the, uh, uh, of this left side of the cue ball. My arm's going to be to the inside. So it's just a, it's a natural uh, uh, thing that occurs as a result of proper training. So, parallax here. Okay, I'm already stepping the cue ball, whether I'm thinking about it or not. So, 
I, I'm just I'm just going down to the step center. I'm noticing a little bit of gear in there. My cue is going right to the inside. It has to to align to that step center. So so from here, it's just a matter it's just a matter of stroking straight. Half ball pivoting. Yeah, I've learned that if I choose to, to mix these various CTE approaches into my game. I primarily, I'm just big time disguise pivoting. Uh, but if I were to mix uh, half ball pivoting in my game, these thin cuts would certainly uh, be at the forefront of when I might would use it. Uh, the half ball pivoting for extremely thin cuts is really pretty good because you get that cue completely out of the way of the cue bone. It's just easy to work. It's easy to get your bridge to be in the right position. You're just you're just more tuned in with really getting lined up good for that what can be a very iffy shot. Okay, half ball pivoting. Um, the pivot comes from left to right, so it's essentially just a mirroring of what happens in basic CTE. Except, except basically my stepping and everything starts up here. So when I'm in this position here, I'm already gearing the cue ball and the object ball. Learn to see the gearing. So when I drop down on this shot, my head's going to coil to the left. I'm gearing the ball. I'm gearing the outside edge of the ball. I notice the parallax line. Uh, my cue is angled to the left. So. I, I don't go directly to the nestle with this for half ball pivoting. I'm, I'm tweaking to get my bridge V on the nestle, and then when I pivot to center, and then when I pivot to center, I'm uh, on the correct alignment. I, if there's such a thing as talking yourself out of a shot, uh, I did. Uh, I did for that particular. Okay, let's try that one again. I'll do so without talking. So it, it can get a little bit challenging sometimes. It's when I'm talking, but I don't want to make excuses. I'm used to it. Uh, but having said that, it, it, it is a little bit easier. Speaking of fluidity and CTE, CTE offers a rhythm and a speed of falling into the shot that, in my opinion, is way superior to what occurs with feel. So keep in mind, we've been working with CTE, something that's new to you. I've been going, uh, you know, at times in a very slow motion like uh, 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 pace for teaching you this. It's, it's, it's not that way when you're actually applying it once you're used to using it. It's, it, it's a thing of beauty. It, it's, it's a feeling of beauty to uh, a, a, apply CTE. There's nothing, there's nothing tedious about it at all. Uh, there's nothing that offers paralysis by analysis. There's nothing that's mechanical about it. It's as natural as natural can be. Okay, that brings us to an end uh, for our lesson with 60 degree, uh, the 60 degree perception. Our next video, uh, video 14, will be uh, on working with straight ends, uh, zero angle shots. Um, this entire truth series is historical in that never before in the history of our game has this information been exposed 
concerning Senator Ed Jane. And what's historical about it is that CTE resolves a center cue ball for a cut shot, something that was never supposed to be. We're going to take a look at straight ends tomorrow, or, or in the next video. This is a one-take video, so I might even I might even just fire it up next. Uh, but we're going to take a look at straight end shots. To my knowledge, straight end shots have never been taught correctly. Uh, sure, you can look at center to center and feel your way into them, and there's people out there that that can make them all day long in their sleep. But that's not what I'm talking about. How do you really look at straight in shots? How do you really align to a straight in shot rather than just feeling your way into a center to center alignment? See you tomorrow or in a moment. <laughs> in video 14. Thank you.